confirm it. Wait until uh, I see it coming on uh, Twitch. Cool. Now we're live. Welcome, everyone. Um, we're at the end of the school year, 2018, in the Northern Hemisphere, anyway. Uh, I'm not sure how it works down south. I think it's switched up a little bit. Um, so basically, I thought we'd do a couple of days of math for anyone interested, if they have questions, if they're cramming for exams, if there's anything they want to work through or understand better. Uh, because I, you know, for some of my students, for some people anyway, uh, school marks matter a lot um, because it's their, you know, sort of the stepping stone for them to progress to post-secondary education, whatever it might be, or whatever they need to do to, um, continue with their work right so uh hello hannah how are you doing i haven't seen you for a while welcome welcome um for the mathematic hey casey how are you doing just popping in for a wee while to say hi thanks for popping in brother i saw your comment by the way uh, uh regarding aaron schwartz's uh, uh documentary i was following that stuff from the get-go um i've been active on read it since it was like really just at the beginning stages and uh, i was following what happened to aaron shorts and uh and the platforms that we use to share information and stuff like that and how they've been hijacked taken over and what happened to aaron shorts and stuff so um i made a comment saying on discord that uh if i need a little motivation uh, to do some before a political stream or something like this i might watch that just to get my blood boiling uh so i can be a little sharp in the streams or whatnot right uh but thank you for bringing it up i've seen a few other ones uh docs about open source community creative commons uh the different types of things right my fave chicho is the king of ASMR. thanks <laughs> having fun with it right having fun with it uh, yeah and again uh, this is going to be sort of open discussion um, we're open to do math basically i noticed at the end of the year and someone commented when i did the announcement uh saying that we're going to do mathematics uh, someone mentioned that the year is already over for them so i guess they finished early but i'm guessing they're probably in college or university because colleges and universities finish school earlier than high school and elementary school in my part anyway so um, in my area right now what's happening is uh, uh, all of high schools they're basically in exam period in the second week of june first week of june second week of june they go into exam period all the way all the way through june some people write exams at the end of june as well uh, so i thought i'd give people an opportunity to you know if they have any math questions we could do i might do lessons or whatnot or it'll just be an open discussion i'll just hang out and whatever you guys want to talk about we can talk about um, if there's no one into doing mathematics right uh, they might have already all everyone might have already packed up to uh, to go you know to do whatever it is that they're doing i know when it sort of changed uh, from when i was in high school uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, info um, basically to get accepted into university in the past uh, when I was in high school in the 90s could you please review the chain rule for my oh I'm not touching calculus Hannah I'm sorry uh, I, I gotta review my calculus I have to review my calculus and relearn a lot of the stuff because I haven't been teaching it or using it yeah I know it's, it's all good for sure but I've had a lot of requests to do calculus, really, um, more than I was expecting, um, to tell you the truth. Um, I wish I was getting more requests to do statistics, because I think statistics is uh, more broad, uh, reaches out to a lot more disciplines. Um, so I've been touching up on statistics a little bit, but I should have been touching up on calculus to be able to do calculus, right? Uh, but I promise in the next year or so, once uh, um, 
my workload sort of transfers over to the online version instead of anyway once i balance things out a little bit i'll try and um, get on that calculus and start creating some content for calculus calculus and stats are amazing very challenging but so applicable in real life it blows my mind yeah 100 percent. and unfortunately they don't really talk about that teach you that in school they mention it but they don't really cover any type of content material that the kids are interested in um, which is a shame right because they just assume mathematics is not applicable that's useless for them and they move on doing other things and at some point in people's lives they come across a hurdle or something they need to learn how to do or do for their company or whatever it is and it's all mathematics and now they have to relearn everything right hello valiance how are you doing hey chicho been a while since i have been able to drop by no worries brother no worries brother i'm going to be doing this for a long time so there'll be a lot of opportunities to drop by the live streams uh, definitely definitely my biggest regret in my schooling is not taking math and science more seriously when i was younger i was very immature in middle school yeah that's the case with almost everyone and i don't you know what i wouldn't uh, I don't know your particular case, Anna, uh, but I wouldn't say it's because of immaturity that a lot of students, uh, a lot of students don't take math and science uh, more seriously. I think it has to do with the way our society is structured and the amount of distractions and noise in our communities that and a lack of sort of I don't know if it's you associate that with the maturity but lack of discipline and lack of uh, lack of understanding what it takes to really be able to function in this world right it's it appears to me anyway almost everybody is is growing up in a bubble in the Western world they think the world is the way they perceive it to be they don't appreciate that the world is a lot different in general than what their experiences have taught them up to the point wherever they are especially in high school right um, there are a lot of kids that are really worldly wise and stuff like this but it just doesn't all come together which is very very unfortunate very unfortunate a lot of people a lot of kids are going to get burned um, i just found out uh, through one of my students and this is you know i was working with them uh, i am baseball i'm a baseball coach and i tell my players school specifically math it's the mastering mastering it's like mastering a sport you've got to do it nearly every day and take the time to get uh, reps in yeah 100 you either use it or you lose it yeah that's one of the things that uh, I learned from someone else but they were talking about something else other than mathematics but they always said use it or lose it baby uh, so yeah you either for me like I knew calculus I knew statistics well but I haven't been using it so you know if we're teaching anyway I use a little bit in some of my work that I do especially when I'm looking at the stats of the streams and the videos and processing some stuff and looking at trends a hundred percent but not on a sort of a academic level right so you do if you don't use it you lose it and sports is a great way to uh, uh, it's a great analogy and one thing I do with a lot of a lot of students that I have that I, that do sports and it's incredible when it comes to mathematics a lot of people assume that those who do who are athletic are going to be bad at mathematics right i've had students that are you know top either football soccer rugby ba basketball players and the team right and a lot of people have written them off over the years regarding academics but then once i start working with them and they learn mathematics 
all of a sudden there's a certain way of it especially with sports those who excel in sports they like to tackle they like to go head on into a situation if they're you know team sports anyway if they're competing against other teams other other players right they go head on into a situation so if people teach them mathematics science in that way the athletes uh, tend to pick up the material a lot faster i've had some some top level uh, kids who are into certain types of sports that didn't excel in mathematics or sciences when i started working with them and by the time they reach grade 12 they're taking you know they're acing their mathematics and they're doing phenomenal in sciences going into engineering right but the school doesn't teach them that if they a lot of a lot of schools because they get a lot of money uh for participating in sports they get a lot of a lot of prestige what they do is they push the athletics uh the sports aspects uh the, of the system right they sort of you know i might be being a little harsh but they really use and abuse their students right they they put them in a little bubble right they take all they can from these students excelling in whatever sports that they're excelling in but they drop the ball and everything everything else so when the kids are done with school they're done with their athletic career if you want to call it that they're left they're left out out to dry right they don't have any safety netting anything to fall back on right and that's when they get into depression and you know they're they're prone to fall for any scam that comes along hello malik how are you doing hey chicho and chat agree with your assessment for many people that is not important how things work only that they do work yeah yeah it is good to connect up the some of the reasons some of the some of the what do you call it the stepping stones that they need to be able to appreciate understand what's going on but they just need to do right that's that's the way i've seen with a lot of my students who are excelling athletics they just need to do right they just need to sit down forget about the proofs of things and stuff tell them how it works get them to do it they pick it up super fast and they don't forget they tend to forget uh, they tend to retain the information a lot longer yeah good thanks man been seeing a lot of chat on discord but haven't really contributed much recently yeah either way i've been pretty busy with my students and stuff my brother was like that hannah was mentioning he was a 3.78 gpa student and now he is a an honors uh architectural engineering student at drexel u in pennsylvania oh awesome man that's good that's good it's good to hear that's the success stories and in, in academics uh, make me really happy really cool the discord is bubbling along nicely it seems to boost around streams i bet it does on discord night bots i like this night bot thing i keep on mentioning it but i do like it uh it saves a little bit of time i should add on more stuff to it actually he often helped me with my homework good stuff siblings uh siblings is a funny thing some there's clashes and then there's some that are very tight just car zany a bat and a ball costs one dollar and ten cents in total the bat costs a dollar more than the ball how much does the ball cost the ball costs ten cents a bat and a ball cost one dollar and ten cents in total the bat costs a dollar Casey might have the right answer five cents should we do this one we could do it how do we lay this out a ball a ball a bat and a ball cost one dollar and ten cents Casey knows <laughs> a bat and a ball uh, da, 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 da. Let's, uh, let's do it let's do let's do the word problem okay here let me do change the view 
Okay. And this is the view we're going to use. Let's lay it out um, the way we would a uh, legit problem, right? So a bat and a ball cost ten, a dollar and ten cents. How do I plan on pajama party for my grandparents? <laughs> the grandparents still, I guess they wear pajamas. Either that or the ball is free. A uh, bat and a ball cost one dollar and ten cents. The ball cost a dollar more than the bat cost all more than ball. Sure. So let's do this. Let's do a let statement. Let B equal the ball and let bat T equal the bat. Okay. So a bat and a ball cost a dollar and ten cents. So a bat or the ball plus actually let's put it in order the way we read it, right? Usually you try to lay things out exactly the way you're reading them to a certain degree, right? So a bat and a ball. So T plus B is equal to dollar and ten cents. And the bat cost a dollar more than the ball, right? So the bat, the bat T is equal to the ball B plus one dollar, right? So all you need to do is do substitution. T is equal to B plus one right and that's the same t as this so what we could do is take this and sub it in to here right so b plus one dollar plus b is equal to a dollar ten right so this guy is this guy here right Whoop. okay now all we do we we'll combine our like terms b plus b is 2b is equal to, I'm going to grab this guy, bring it over, minus one dollar, right? So that becomes ten cents. Oops, let me write it down as decimals, right? So that equals ten cents. And then you divide by two, divide by two. So the ball cost 0 0.5. Point zero 0.05, which is five cents, which is what Casey said. Right on Casey, right? Fun. I always get that wrong, believe it or not. Whenever someone asks me that question, right off the bat, it's instinctive to say 10 cents. But should think about it, right? I should think about it anyway. Uh, either that or the ball is free. <laughs> yeah, the ball should be free if you're buying it back. Uh, Hannah, I'm interested in investing in some cryptos. Wondering where you get info in making investment decisions on some of the newer cryptos uh you have to go to their websites right and it's a dangerous game investing in new cryptos i think it's it it's legit it is it is going to go where it's going to go right uh, the only way uh the powers that be can stop it if they criminalize holding cryptos and start going after people and throwing them in jail which is something they did with prohibition right back in I forget what the date is, but they basically meant they basically passed the law that said uh, growing hemp. You needed a sort of a, uh, a a number, a tax number to be able to grow hemp, industrial hemp in the United States anyway. And they wouldn't give out that number, the permit to anyone to grow hemp. And farmers have been growing hemp forever. Right. So they grew hemp. And then the IRS came and I, I think I have my history correctly. I read this stuff a long time ago. They came in and anyone that didn't have the tax permit, which was nobody had it because they didn't give anybody the right to grow hemp, they threw them in jail. Like the first people that went to jail for, uh, because of prohibition, because of criminalization of cannabis, were white farmers, right? which is crazy. So they could pull the same thing with cryptocurrencies. They could say, anybody holding cryptos, you need to have some kind of permit to have it. If you're trading it, they could uh, pass certain kinds of laws saying that it's, uh, I've looked into this stuff, it's a currency and you know, you're a currency exchanger and stuff like this, some technical, every word has certain type of meaning. But 
right now I think the best thing that can happen with cryptos is to be classified as an asset right that way and I think that's where it's going with a lot of things and that's the way I look at it cryptos aren't really currency right now they haven't been currency since the prices went up and people started hoarding them right so cryptos for me they're sort of collectibles they're money right they're not currency they're money and anything can be money we've talked about that right and basically their assets so what you need to do is take a look at their websites take a look at uh, who the people are who are involved with a specific type of crypto and really dig down and see if you appre you know have a good understanding appreciation of what those uh, cryptos what those companies are doing basically they're they're providing they're doing IPOs but they're calling them ICOs right initial coin offerings I sort of talked about this uh, in the last cryptocurrency video we put together right and I think that's the way you have to approach it and really dig down into the history of the people involved with the crypto right if you're planning on investing if you're just trading buying and selling follow the charts it's just charts okay sell the news uh, buy the hype I guess if you want uh, so play it as if it was penny stocks and do it that way um, but cryptos might be in for you know they might go to the moon or they might be in for a rough ride I personally wouldn't have a hell of a lot invested in cryptos or put into cryptos I'd be trading actively because the ball the rug could be pulled out from under them in an instant and they could also shoot up to the moon in an instant so if you're constantly trading taking 20 percent off the table every time uh, you're ahead of the game that's my that's what i would do but that takes a lot of energy that takes a lot of effort right um the main cryptos they're probably not going away right bitcoin ethereum ripple uh, monero uh, some of the other ones they're probably not going to go away their value might change will change okay I literally just finished the math exam yeah some people are writing their exams early it's weird da -da 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 five cents plus dollar five yeah yeah race kill is uh, mentioning the ball and bat problem cool and I'm not looking forward to the results oh no I hope they come out okay uh, regarding the test be right back what is going on uh, on this beyond my comprehension what is going on I guess here beyond my comprehension uh, we're doing math we're talking about life good evening master <laughs> good evening uh, good morning for me good evening to you uh, Andy legalize it hannah says most definitely stop for my take any centralized authority that criminalizes anything uh, is stepping beyond the we'll leave it that we're talking about mathematics <laughs> maybe we'll do a stream on prohibition and legalization once I collect uh, compile some of the data that I've collected yes Chicho spam a lot hello how are you doing and in Lake there is a patch let's, see this out. Doop, doop. <laughs> let's check this out let's check out the next question uh, in a Lake there's a patch of lily pads okay every day the patch doubles in size if it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake how long would it take for the patch to cover half the lake okay sure let's do that problem and by the way on this note um, zany just just by car zany just the car zany uh, I think I'm just going to refer to it as zany. Uh, just on that note, I was mentioning that I was working with a student that I have, not the size of the patch equal one, 
Yeah, 100%, you can definitely do that. Uh, just regarding this growth, and this is exponential growth, I believe it's exponential growth, uh, doubles in size. Yeah, this is exponential growth. Someone's doing all the problems already. We'll confirm those, right? We'll do it down here. But I was working with a student a couple of days ago, yesterday or a couple of days ago, and they're in grade 11, right? Or they're in grade 10, they're in grade 11. And for sequences and series, there's a chapter for sequence and series that they've been teaching in grade 11 for at least two decades right it's been in grade 11 curriculum and they talk about arithmetic sequence series and geometric sequence series and they've been talking teaching arithmetic and geometric sequence series which are basically exponential growth it's sort of an intro to kicking off to exponential growth and kicking off to calculus and whatnot right they've been teaching this for about two decades as far as i've been involved with it right i just found out two days ago in a new curriculum they're rolling out in my area they took out the geometric series and sequences blown away i was blown away that they would take a chapter and cut it in half right and decide to take that information out of grade 11 mathematics and they're deciding to introduce it in grade 10 but as soon as they introduce stuff in a lower grade, they're dumbing it down. They've done this before in multiple other things, or sometimes it's just completely eliminated. So just imagine not being taught exponential growth in high school math, right? That means people have no concept of how our economic system works at present, how population growth works at present. They will have zero understanding of global geopolitics economics anything if they don't understand this it blows me away uh z chart question that's statistics um i can touch on it a little bit let's do the uh spam a lot let's do the question that was posted regarding the patch and then we'll do that when i was in israel this past august i had the time of my life and i got a haircut from an amazing armenian barber in the armenian quarter of jerusalem the gentleman was the nicest dude ever and gave me that best haircut I've ever had. I thought of you when I got... Oh, hopefully they weren't bald. Maybe they were. If I was in another life, maybe I'd be cutting hair. Um, fun. Um, okay, so what was that question? Let's check this out. So in a lake, in a lake, there's a patch. and There's a lily patch. Every day the patch doubles in size. It takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake. You said you were Armenian. Yeah, I am Armenian. Descendant wise, I am Armenian. But you said you were Armenian. Yeah, I was uh, blood wise, I'm Armenian, born in Iran. Most of my life, Canada. So I'm Canadian, Armenian, Iranian, Iranian, Armenian, Canadian, Armenian, Iranian, Canadian, Armenian, Canadian, Iranian, <laughs> whichever way you want to call it, right? Uh, Next time you're there, tell them, uh, say Barev to them. Barev in Armenian means hello. So doubles in size in... Uh, da, da, da. Doubles in size... Da, 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 da. Every day the patch doubles. So every day the patch doubles in size. It takes 48 days for the patch to cover. The yeah, the quick answer to this is uh, 47 because the next day it would double, so it would have to be half. So we don't really even need to do mathematics well we are doing mathematics but mental math right so let's lay, lay this out let me erase let me change the camera angle Doop. your kinder Armenian, kinder Armenian. that's actually pretty cool i want to start calling it that kinder armenian citizen of the world i like to think i'm a, I'm a human being citizen of the world I used to tell people I'm Babylonian and whatever it was, right? Oops, that's the wrong one. Is this the one? That's the one. Okay, cool. Looks like the green I have to erase faster. So just imagine, just let's do a visual of this, right? So here's a, here's a pond, right? Here's a lily patch. Right? Here's a lily patch. 
this lily patch doubles every day right and in 48 days 48 days equals full right the pond is full of lily pads so how long does it take for the lily patch to cover half the lake well for it to cover half the lake what has to happen is the next day it's going to double right so the only way the lily patch can double the next day and cover the whole patch if the day before it covered half the pond right if it covered half the pond then the next day it's going to double that means it fills the whole lake so it's 47 days right and this is this is uh, a serious concept when it comes to exponential growth when it comes to our current economic systems when it comes to our political systems when it comes to the environment resources and stuff like this because right now this concept this type of problem should be emphasized more in school because right now what's happening is uh, one of the best examples you can think about is uh, I've heard this used a lot where if you have a like a milkshake or a drink and you're just drinking out of a straw right you're drinking you're drinking out of the straw and the straws let's say you have your glass and the straws all the way in the bottom right so you're drinking you're drinking everything's fine and dandy and you think the drink is unlimited if you know let's say it's a blind uh, sampling right you don't see how much liquid there is in the glass jar or the cup you're holding right so if you're drinking you're drinking everything's fine and dandy you're getting all the liquids you want until you get to the end and then you're dry you're done right that's the way the resource extraction is working that's the way the environment's working as for a formal way of laying this out how should we lay this out i haven't done one of these problems for a long time um lily patch lily patch Hmm, can we even do this l actually we don't even know the size of this thing full you know what i would just approach this this way i would say this is the best way to approach this in 46 days i mean if you can take a look at this in 46 days right it would be a quarter full right In 46 days, it'd be a quarter full because the 47th day would fill up this and the 48th day would fill up this. If that's enough for you, we might just leave it there because that's the best way to look at it. Sometimes mathematics is best done visually instead of laying down all the formulas and stuff like this. The formulas and the variables and stuff, that stuff is really good if you actually don't have sort of trick problems laid out like this. If they give you variables if they give you numbers and you know exactly what you're shooting for okay i hope that's okay if you want to do more formal we can we'll think about it and do it okay. let's check it out i just say i'm an aussie madius king of kings look upon my works you might be despair i don't know what ozymandias is i'm gonna well done race killer let's check it out ozymandias what is that word ozymandias is a sonnet written by english romantic poet percy bashi shelley first published in the uh in 11 january 1818 issue of the examiner in london it was included in the following year in Shelley's. Ah, that's cool. Ozymedius. Oh, here it is. Persistent. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert near them on the sand, half sunk, a shelter, horses. That's cool. Oh, there's two of them. In each of sandy silence, all alone, stands a gigantic lake. Ah, oh, interesting. I gotta get more into poetry. I like hip hop, I like rap. Poor Shochicho. Ozamentis is also a character from Watch. That's right. 
why do we study only functions in school? Um, why do we study only functions in school? Uh, and not relations. I mean, the question is, why study only functions and not relations? In my part of the world, they used to teach relations a little bit. And they took that out and they just focused on, actually, they still introduce relations. Uh, but basically, the reason we study mainly focus on functions uh, is because with functions, you can make predictions. Basically, the hierarchy, the pecking order of things is this. Let me lay this out for you. Let me change the view again. So basically, our, what we want to do with mathematics for us to use math in the real, real world to quantify things, to be able to understand how systems work is this, right? We take something, a certain type of system, and try to formalize it, like the, the pawn one, right? We give, you know, we do let statements. We say this equals that, that equals this, and stuff like this, and we put things together like the ball and the baseball bat right we take sentences the way we uh think how things are related and we put them in an equation an equation usually is a sentence connecting up different variables different thoughts right and we end up doing this and we look at different types of systems and the most general type of system we have what we're trying to find out is we're trying to find out if variables have relationships Right. So what we have is this relation, really, I spell this relation. Am I spelling this right even? Relationships. I think so. Let me, let me check my spelling on this because I hate to spell this incorrectly. yeah i think so okay sometimes i have brain farts i totally forget how words are spelled right so we have relationships okay and basically relationships are you know if one thing is related to multiple other things or if one thing can possibly be related in two different ways to an, to another variable right graphically relationships look like this right this is a relationship a circle for a given x value right you can have a y value or multiple y values right this would be a relationship right this is a radical this is a circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared or more generally x plus k squared plus y plus um, h squared is equal to r squared right where k and h the opposite signs of the, of the center of the circle and r is the radius of the circle right so when it comes to a relationship a given x value can give you one or more y values right so for a given x this x value we can have two different y values which is useful right or multiple other y values okay but the problem with that is just imagine if you're sitting in a car you turn on the car right and then you put your foot on the brake because there's usually there's a safety mechanism you've got to put out your foot on the brake before you can change gears or if you're driving standard right but let's say you put your foot on the foot on the brake right turn on the car and you put your car in drive and then you put your foot on the gas what's the car going to do right if you put your car in a drive and you put your foot on the gas the car will go forward i ask this question this is a question that i ask my students a lot right i go okay the difference between a relationship and a function if you send the car turn on your car okay and you put your car in gear you put your foot on the gas i turn to my students and say what is a car going to do more than half the time the students say the car is going to move right and then my reply to that is well is it going to go forward backward left right up down right 
When you put your foot on the foot on the gas and the car moves, that's a relationship. When you can make a prediction of which direction that car is going to move, that's a function, right? And functions to us end up being more useful because we can extrapolate into the future and we can take a look at the past and try to figure out how we came to where we are, right? If for a given X value, you have multiple Y values, let's say the function does this, or the relationship does this, right? Well, for this X value here, we have one, two, three, four, five different Y values. And this is things that happen in the real world, right? Really, this is situations that do appear in the real world, but we don't know exactly which one it is. For example, when it comes to uh, atomic structures, right? Um, they used to teach us that this is the nucleus of the atom, right? Nucleus, we've got neutrons and protons. And around the atom, we have electrons orbiting, right? This is sort of your first introduction to how an atom works. But an atom really doesn't work that way, the structure of the atom. The structure of the atom is the nucleus here. And there's probability. You know, I'm not, I don't even know if I'm drawing this correctly or not. But there's a probability area where the electrons can appear, right? And if you look at them, the probability is they're not there. So you can say the electrons appear in these probability zones, but you can't tell which direction they're going to go if I remember my chemistry correctly, right? So relationships have their uses, but functions allow us to make more accurate predictions. So relationships is a general umbrella we have when it comes to understanding the world around us through functions. But when it comes to more precise understanding of the world to be able to make predictions, we have functions, right? Functions. And functions are a special type of relationship where for a given X value, there could only be one Y value, right? So this would be a function, right? Because for a given X, there's only one Y. And you can talk about this using the vertical line test. That's what people talk about, right? When you have this type of thing, if you do a vertical line, you're crossing the function at three different places. That's a relationship. It's no longer a function. So whenever you see a graph, right? If you see a graph like this, or if you see a graph like this, all you have to do is do a vertical line test and see how many times you actually cross the function, which is basically saying, hey, for this X value, what's your Y value, right? So functions are a special type of relationship where they narrow your choices down to for a given input, for a given X value, you can only have one output, right? It's like saying tuna are fish, but all fish aren't tuna. Right. This is sort of the hierarchy. The, the the analogy that I use is taking it back to biology, where you have your different categories of animals and creatures in the world. Right. There's the I forget what it is. I, should, I usually look this up at the beginning of the year, but I forget by the end of the year. Right. But basically, you have your kingdom, your fauna, your your you know we're animals and we're human beings were animals animals and then we're i don't know what we're categorized as we're categorized in the same group as chimpanzees i guess whatever that is and then from there we go to homo sapiens or something like this it's all subcategories right so each one of these is a branch up here but these guys aren't necessarily just this there's other branches coming off these things right there's other branches coming off these things. So there's subcategories. So the reason we study functions is for us to be able to understand, do predictions in the world, right? And functions has special type of functions as well. There's a whole bunch of functions we've talked about in the past, but one of the first ones we talk about are smooth functions. Smooth functions, right? And we start talking about smooth functions because they're the easiest ones to understand. They have the 
they're the least complicated as smooth functions are basically any function that's like this right like a line is a smooth function they can't have points so smooth functions can't be like that they can't have gaps right so that's not a smooth function that's not a smooth function anything with a line curves and stuff like this they're considered smooth functions and smooth functions we call polynomials right polynomials okay that's what smooth functions are and the first type of function that we look at that are called polynomials are lines right so line is equal to y equals mx plus b and then the next one we look at are parabolas which is y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c sorry if i'm writing this small but we've talked a lot about this stuff i just want to sort of give you the breakdown of this thing right so a line is like this a polynomial um, not a polynomial a quadratic is like this right and then you have other types of polynomial functions the kicker with other types of polynomial functions if you have things like this these polynomial functions tend to be made up of these guys right and we talked about this in an asmr video we put out regarding uh, greatest common factor and stuff like this so just imagine taking these functions and saying hey these guys are just made up of these little guys here right a whole bunch of quadratics and lines and whatnot then what we can do is we can take a look at this system if a function represents a system we can take a look at that system and try to figure out what makes things go down and what makes things go up and then fine-tune that system to if we want to always go up we always go up and if we want to always go down go down or if we want to do fluctuations we do fluctuations right and this goes into investing this goes into athletics like if you're if you're ever doing weight training right um if if you ever done sports you should go to the gym and do weight training but the way it happens with weight training initially you see a lot of results initially your strength goes up your bulkiness goes up your fat content goes down uh, you become healthier basically right initially when you're doing weight training you see great results and then what happens is you plateau out a little bit right and then it's hard to break this plateau and sometimes you actually go down you see your strength go down and then what you see you see another spurt right and sometimes this happens naturally sometimes you actually have to change your diet or change your exercise routine to be able to go to the next step and then you plateau come down go up right and you can do this yourself at the beginning stages by reading and stuff like this but once you go into higher level athletics when it's you know world cup or olympics or whatever it might be there are people who specialize in trying to get you off this plateau and going up again may they be dietitians nutritions um, coaches or whatnot right so this would be a function and if you can understand what makes people break out of their plateau or specifically um, you know you have to fine-tune it based on who they are and what their body types are and what athletics they're doing this becomes a function and if you can standardize this over different types of people doing different types of athletics depends on the whatever sports they're doing as well right if you can break this down then what you've done you've created functions for different types of sports and different types of body body types to be able to break through plateaus and become better and better and better is this a relationship sure it's a relationship but more specifically it's a function because you can change your input and get one specific output out which is better results just imagine if you you're doing your athletics you hit the plateau and you want to break through this plateau and you change your diet and the diet does good you go up if you change your diet the diet goes down well this now became a relationship you change your diet and you either went up or you went down if you went down then you need to change back again to what you were or something else right so relationship come in handy as well okay sorry if i went off a little bit but this is 
something that should be, as far as I'm concerned, a whole chapter should be dedicated to this in early on in high school, grade eight or nine, try to make people appreciate what these things are that they're studying, which they don't, unfortunately. Okay. Oop. Let me change the view again. Oop. I hope that answered the question. Uh, why do we study only functions in school? Poor show, poor show, Chicho as well as is also a character from Watchmen. Hello there. Oz, uh, the Oz Mat Matthias is the the guy who was super smart and super fast, who basically set the world to go into chaos in the movie anyway. This is mathematical expression of why you need to educate yourself. The more variables you can uh, quantify, the more accurately you can predict outcomes position or direction this is true in every aspect of life yeah agreed my life 100 the more you can understand about a system and talk about the different variables in play then the more you know about that system whatever that system might be smooth functions include much more than polynomials um smooth functions include much more than polynomials uh, da -da 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 -da. Give me an example, uh, race, race, race or kill. Like circles are smooth, but they're relationships. They're not functions, right? Sexy. I like your beard. I wish I was there to touch it. <laughs> Thanks. I, I do like touching it. That's for sure. The goatee anyway, the beard is, oh, I love the beard. I miss the beard, the full beard. Be respectful, please. For sure, for sure. Little comments here and there is okay too, Casey. I think so. Um, I'm used to dealing with uh, teenagers, and teenagers throw darts and throw comments, and I think that's the way they like interaction. I think one of the reasons for that is uh, because a lot of teenagers and preteen as well they're taken all into groups and put into little rooms and told to be quiet for hours upon hours so when they're able to vent and express themselves they express themselves in a whole bunch of different ways uh, it's the nature of the beast it's the way uh, uh, it's it's just the way it is uh, yeah for sure thank you for the compliment josh Thank you for the compliment, Josh. I do like I do like the goatee. I do love the goatee. I love facial hair. Uh, I do love facial hair. Zany, at a party, everyone shook hands with everyone else. There were sixty-six handshakes. How many people were at the party? Oh, these things always trip me up. Anybody got an answer for this? Everybody shook hands. How do we go about this problem the definition of a smooth function is a function that is continuous and all its derivatives are continuous so that shouldn't include discrete functions right so exponential functions for example yeah, smooth functions, so sine and stuff would be two, for sure. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I always just consider that trigonometry, but for sure. Um, from, oh man, I got to remember my calculus. Um, for sine, cosine and stuff, you can express them as uh, sequences as well. Um, or series as well, right? Hey, it's all good fun. <laughs> Definition of smooth fun. I gotta look into that more. I'll look into that more. Thank you for the correction, race, uh, racer kill. Um, since I deal with mainly high school, I gear my terminology specifically for high school uh, to get the ideas across to people so they can understand. <laughs> twelve people. Is it twelve people that shook hands? Yeah, it's sixty-six handshakes. How would we go about solving this? Coins, <laughs> crypto coins. Um, how would we go about doing that? 
I'm not strong with my crypto, um, not my crypto, my, with my commutators and permutations. Um, N is such that N choose 2 equals 66. Oh, really? Okay, so we would do this. Let me, let me lay it out. Let me erase this. N choose 2 is 66. Cool. If that's the case, then this is the math behind it. N choose 2 is 66. So N choose 2 is equal to 66. And this is commutorics, right? And commutorics, there's an amazing documentary out. It's called N is the Number. It's about the guy who was the master of this. I think it's called N is the Number. Highly recommend watching that documentary if you want to know the power of this type of mathematics. But basically this, okay, let me write the general formula for this. The general formula for this is this. N choose R, I think R or K they use. This is a way uh, we express a mathematical uh, formula that allows us to decide how many different ways we can order certain things if we have a certain number that we started with, right? So N is how many things we're starting with R is how many things we're choosing out of that group of things we're starting with, right? So the formula for this is, it's N factorial over N minus R factorial, R factorial. And factorial, this symbol here, we talked about this a little bit, right? If I write down factorial, N factorial, what you're doing is, we'll do it with a number as well. So if I have five factorial here, you start off with N, and you multiply n by one less than whatever n was so n times n minus one and then you do it again subtract one from here and multiply n minus two etc right now for obvious reasons if this makes sense to you n cannot be a negative number and it cannot be a decimal it's got to be a whole number so it could be zero one two three if you know our real number set right we've talked about this real number set okay you got natural numbers whole numbers integers rationals and irrationals right n has to be a whole number which includes natural numbers and it includes zero right so when it comes to n n can't be negative Okay, and it cannot be a decimal, right? So if we're going to apply this rule to 5, this would be 5 times 1 less than 5, which is 4, times 1 less than 4, which is 3, 1 less than 3, which is 2, 1 less than 2, which is 1, and we stop at 1. So this goes all the way down to 1. As soon as you hit 1, you stop subtracting and multiplying, right? So 5 factorial is really 5 times 4 is 20, 20 times 3 is 60, 60 times 2 is 120. So 5 factorial is 120, okay? Just clarifying what a factorial is, okay? I'm going to erase this. We're going to leave this up. So if we're going to apply this formula to this, hopefully I'm going down the right path here, right? Yeah, I'm going down. I'll check the messages afterwards, right? So what we have here, we have the following function. If we apply it to this, this would be n factorial over n minus 2 factorial, n minus 2 factorial, and r factorial is 2 factorial. Now 2 factorial, 2 factorial is 2 times 1. We stop at 1, so 2 factorial is just 2. Okay. This has to equal 66. So let's expand the n factorial so you see how this works. n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 dot dot dot, right? Over n minus 2 factorial is going to be n minus 2 times one less than n minus two, which is n minus three, dot, 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 all the way down to one, right? We've got one here and we're gonna have one here. 
times 2 factorial and 2 factorial is just 2. That has to equal 66. Now what ends up happening is because we're just doing straight out division, there's no plus and minus between these things each term, right? You got n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 2, n minus 3. These guys kill these guys all the way down, right? So they're gone. So the only thing we have up top is n times n minus 1, and we've got a 2 in the bottom. Okay. Let me erase here, continue this up here. Okay. So right now we got n times n minus 1 over 2 is equal to 66, right? So we can cross multiply this up, multiply this guy in. So this becomes n squared minus n is equal to 66 times 2, 2, 1, 12, 132, 132. And then what we can do is bring this over. n squared minus n minus 132 is equal to 0. So what we're doing now is we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 132 and that to give us negative 1. Now, in this situation, the two numbers are one apart because one is positive, one is negative because they multiply to give you negative and add to give you negative. So the bigger number has to be one more than the smaller number and the smaller number is positive. So two numbers that multiply to give you 132. What are they? We could use a quadratic formula. Let's use the quadratic formula. Um, want to use a quadratic formula? Should we use a quadratic formula? Two numbers are multiplied to give you 132. Hmm. I have to use a calculator to figure that one out. Uh, let me see. Da, 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 da. Oh, we got spammers come in. Solve the handshake thing. Solve the handshake. 12 or 11? 12 times 11. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you for that. Thank you for doing this. So 12 times 11, right? That's going to be... 2, 1, add a 0, 2, 1 is 132, right? So the bigger number has to be negative and the smaller number has to be positive, right? So this becomes this, n, n, minus 12 plus 11. So what you end up having is n is equal to, here, let me do this in multiple steps. And we've talked about this solving quadratics. So once you have two things multiplied together, give you 0, which is one of the powers of zero. Without this power of zero, our mathematics would not be where it is. Right? We would have huge problems, right? It's the only way to solve this. Well, I don't know if it's the only way, but it's the way to solve this. Once you have two things multiplied together to give you zero, you can set each one equal to zero. So n minus 12 is equal to zero, and n plus 11 is equal to zero. So n is equal to 12, and n is equal to negative 11. Now, n is equal to negative 11 according to our definition n cannot be negative right because if we do n factorial you can't go negative 11 times negative 12 times negative 13 you'll never stop you'll never get to one so we kill that answer and the answer is 12. so there are 12 people on the party everybody's shaking hands you would get 66 total handshakes with 12 people shaking hands okay I like the math aspect of it, how do you, how you go about these things. With combinatorics, permutations and combinatorics, there's so many different types of problems, situations that can come your way that each one requires a certain way of solving things. Um, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. It's just I'm not powerful in taking the word problem and converting it to a solution in permutations or combinations. I don't do enough problems like this to be good at it, right? Like Hannah said previously, use it or lose it, right? Use it or lose it. Let's see, let's see. I'm just gonna catch up on some of the comments. I think the first guy, da, 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 da. what is the sum of infinity, please? Infinity. progression sequence think the first guy in 12 shakes has 11 times but you need to subtract one from each person because they've already shook hand with the person before some of all positive numbers 
there you go infinity Did it. early bath for <laughs> someone like this got timed out thanks for thanks for timing the well casey uh, i don't know what the comments were bedtime okay sweet dreams brother sweet dreams solve this handshake thing 12 or negative one. yes because n choose 2 is equal to number of two subsets of an n set n can only be positive integers yeah my thinking was because it's like rolling two dice that's where I got n equals n plus one times n over two. Oh, really I have to think about that uh, I know Casey's gone to sleep but that's interesting when to think about it so it's 12 it is 12 yeah negative people seems questionable <laughs> It could be there could be negative people around who knows right that was fun oh i was sawing backwards i did this in a much less mathematical way i just counted the people down by one handshake until i got 66 really how would you do that malik how would you go about da -da -da -da? oh integrating I'm not doing integrals right now, brother. I'm not doing calculus. My apologies. Not bad yet. By the way, I got to have to go soon. It's okay, Casey. Take off, man. You got to take off. You got to take off. Uh, it's what time is it? You're eight hours ahead, I believe. Yeah, and it's Friday. Have a blast, brother. Thanks for popping by. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, da, da. Oh, wow. So you did it as a series. Does that work? Does that equal 66? What is that? 23, 33, 42. Really? That's cool. What an interesting hypothesis. Spotting, slamming, symbols, warning. Oh, that's Nightball. Hey, how come Malik's message got Nightbot? Stop it. Nightbot is uh, auto. I don't know. The sequence starts at 11. I'm not sure why uh, Nightbot zapped your thing, Malik. My apologies for that. Oops, Nightbot didn't like that. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Not by time by Malik for five seconds. Reason. Stop spamming symbol. Oh, symbols. Hey, this is math. We're allowed to do symbols. I might have to fine tune night bots. Um, I know this happened before. You should con configure night bot to not warn people. Uh, I could try integrating by parts. I can't post it because night bot won't let me. You know what? Let me. Can you turn? up the volume on your mic um i'd rather not mess around with the volume i'll talk a little bit louder uh let me go to nightbot let me see if i can reconfigure nightbot right now nightbot or should we turn it off we could turn it off uh whew, i haven't been on nightbot for a while uh, i presume you would change close into another form beforehand i believe so from what i remember in the integration the sign the the trick stuff uh, they have special functions that you associate them with and stuff uh, doing integration for trick functions is a little tricky is a little tricky from what i remember can you scream you look like you are good at metal screaming uh, i do okay i do okay <laughs> If you want to know how good I am at metal screaming, I put out a little uh, video on uh, uh, what it's like, what it's like to be in a mosh pit. Uh, so basically, some of Casey's posted above, but starting at eleven. Ah, okay, that's cool. I'm gonna head off. Was fun, but my brains are mushy tonight. <laughs> Not been too well last few days. Oh, I hope you feel better, brother. You too, man. You too, man. Have some rest. Drink some nice tea. Drink some nice tea. 
Hey, Tink, how are you doing? Nightbot timed out. Is for f oh no, okay, I gotta kill Nightbot. Uh, how do I? Oh, okay, let me. Uh, Nightbot, Whisper. Uh, no. Sorry, Race. Can't write anything. Okay, I'm gonna. How do I kill Nightbot? Uh, I'm on Nightbot. Commands, custom. Defaults, spam protection, enable, disable, excess emotes. Okay, I'm disabling. Cool. Uh, disabled. Okay, disable, disable, disable. Oh no, links I'm going to enable. Uh, Access symbols disabled. Okay. Okay, guys. Yes, bro. There's a nice coincidence between some of first integers and n choose two. Haha. <laughs> Feeling <laughs> fought for us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Rizkill and Malik. Uh, so I disabled some of the stuff on Nightbot. Hopefully it'll uh, you can post what you need to post can i right now try it out try it out if you can do it fantastic i hope so anyway i hope you can do it there's a nice i don't have the advanced knowledge of mathematical functions to know the language of n choose too so it was great to see it ah cool it's fun stuff that stuff is fantastic and and we're to yeah that's basically it what we wrote down here which is oh i think i killed the original one yeah right there if you see this guy right here right is equal to the sum of the first n minus one integers if i send a link to a to a question or arrangements could we have a look at it you know what i've disabled links because as soon as i enable links people were posting links to phishing sites and stuff like this so links um what you can do is do on discord i think uh if you go to discord here let me post the discord thing on here cool so there's a discord uh forum that we have set up if you click on it that should take you to discord accept invite and there's a, there's a math uh, section that you can post links on so if you post it on there and we're going to come back with another math stream at uh, at 10 30 today right and uh, maybe we can take a look at it so if you post links there we can grab the links from there yeah links activate might mean bots come in and post weird links yeah that's the reason i i got nightbot to uh, i linked up nightbot with the live streams was because we were getting some spammers coming in and links being posted and i didn't want people to click on links that were going to go to phishing sites and um, i want to make sure no one's going to get burnt uh, for this if that's okay uh, Collins okay I'm in the uh, Pacific Standard uh, on the west coast of Canada so right now we're at 9 45 uh, a.m. my time okay so I'm basically LA time Los Angeles time in a certain country half of five equals three if the same proportional what's the value of a third of 10 um we could do it let's try it out half is that even a math question i don't know we could try to lay it out let's try to lay it out
So it would be sort of more of a weighted type of thing, I believe. Do you want to, uh, yeah, let me change the view. Let's see if we can work our way through it. Interesting question used by professional pollsters are one of the reasons why certain viewpoints are disregarded because what they do with them is they give them weighted so this is sort of to me this would be sort of a weighted question right a half of five is a third right so will that even work i don't even know if that works um because it would have to be two variables in the weighted problem right because what we're saying is half of x Half of five is equal to a third. Half of five is equal half of five is equal to three. Half of five is equal to three. That's a standard we set. So we could do it this way. Here, let's lay it down. A half of five is equal to three. And the question is this question needs you to invent new math i think i think it does but let's try to invent it why not a third of a 10 so we want to find out what a third of a 10 is right if half of five half of five is a third then a five five is equal to six right and 10 is two fives multiplied together. i mean this is the best i could do with this right so a third 10 is equal to two times five is equal to this is what we're looking for right well what we can do is if five is equal to six we'll just substitute six in for five right so this becomes a third times two times six right so one over three is equal to twelve one third times twelve is four so one third of ten is four <laughs> That would be my answer. I don't know if that's legit or not. <laughs> right? <laughs> that makes sense. Six? I got four, half a third. Half of ten, a third of ten is that. It starts with the premise that five is equal to six. Yeah, so let n equal five. Yeah, so you will be starting a math stream at GM, GMT from your information. Uh, GMT time, GMT time, GMT time is that, uh, I believe that's uh, UK, is it not? GMT Greenwich, yeah, I believe that's UK. Uh, and UK is, it should be, from what I understand. Basically, we're going to start another math stream uh, in about 40 minutes, right? We're going to end the stream at 10 my time in about 12 minutes 10 minutes or so and then we're going to take a half an hour break and we're going to do another math stream okay and then tomorrow we're doing four streams and all the times posted for the math streams are my time okay <laughs> your case in your back what are you doing back the handshake problem was bothering me i think what my brain was trying to get to was <laughs> and uh, it was six uh, eyes uh that's solvable or is that uh time for me to go <laughs> i think you need to go to bed <laughs> i think you need to go to bed there there you go it's bsd at the moment gst during winter yeah they changed the time i always say psd but i found out they called it pdt now really why it's just weird during winter any cool any cool hikes up in victoria there's lots of amazing walking around in western west coast of british columbia uh, uh, in all of canada i've been all over the place in canada i've been to many places in canada i've gone to more places in canada than uh, aside from people i've known in geophysics that have done geophysics uh, excluding anyone that I've met that has done geophysics or geology uh, I've gone to more places in Canada than most people I know uh, definitely more more places than my friends and stuff uh, I used to be proud to say I've been to 
every province and territory in Canada, that was before they made Nunavut, Nunavut, they split up Northwest Territories into Northwest Territories and Nunavut. So I still have to visit Nunavut. And there's amazing, amazing nature in Canada. It is raw, it is beautiful, it's uh, magnificent, magnificent. Yeah, so there's lots of amazing hikes up here. Uh, <laughs> our roots of that question are not integ integers. It's great, I'll be back for that. Cool, see you a little later. Okay, awesome brother, see you a little later. So no solution for integer N. Um, I don't know which question that is. Da, 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 da. So no solutions for integer N. I'm not sure if that's, that's the handshake one or if that's the half of five is, <laughs> half of five is what? What was half of five? It's three. Half of five is three fun um that was a fun math session i like that it's just random questions right informal because last time we did this we did a whole day with four different streams going on i had some st stuff laid out where we did some trigonometry and whatnot i saw a spread demographic surfing that last uk general election which major parties were using to target policy so when they or canvassing they predicted that people of certain ages and backgrounds were less likely to vote so their answers had less weight than those more likely to vote if i was doing that canvas i would give more weight to the people less likely to vote because if they came out to vote they found that majority of their 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 peers didn't even bother to vote they didn't think it was important these people thought it was that important for them to break away from their peers to vote the the voting methods and the data collected by certain polling stations i've looked at some of that data man some of that data is garbage uh i think you're basically on the right track casey the right equation is that yeah you're pretty close casey with n the end thing it has to be combinatorial. you got to do it that way with factorials got you i'm hella rusty i'll go around <laughs> yeah for sure brother you should especially if you're recouping really uh, health comes first health comes first uh, da, da, da. i don't know how they make those predictions but it was interesting to note not voting uh removes policy weight from your entire demographic crazy eh? crazy they should be uh, yeah the voting stuff some people say voting should be mandatory but that makes it a, gives more power to centralized government for corruption so there's pluses and minuses for everything i just think the best way to to deal with what's going on with our politics is to de decouple uh, personal choices with centralized government how we choose to live our lives uh, with a centralized government right they shouldn't be allowed to tell us what we can do on a on a personal basis as long as we're not affecting the community as a whole that we're forcing our opinion on others right which is what a centralized government is doing with their votings and stuff like this right there should be some kind of understanding in in the countries and communities of what you know don't harm others and whatnot but what you do to your own body yourself is nobody's business nobody's business in australia yeah that's the that's the one example i know that australia is mandatory but there's a none of the above option that's the option that i want none of the above i would go out and vote every election every municipal none of the above none of the above none of the above unless I really meant to vote for somebody. The day before yesterday, I was 21, and the next year, I will be 24. What day is my birthday? Uh, the day before yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was 21, and the next year, I will be 24. The day before yesterday, so you turn 22, no interesting question i would have to think about that i don't know vote local and if an institution can't effectively enact a policy 
it should devolve to a level low enough to address it properly i agree i think what should happen with the voting stuff just since we're on it i think all parties anybody that wants to come into power right have the trust of the people you know to get into a certain governmental position right they have to lay down exactly what they plan on doing right and for me 80 percent i've mentioned this before 80 percent is legit and if they are able to implement 80 percent of what they said they were going to do then they should be allowed to stay in office if they start mm, reneging on their promises they're gone right it should be a contract it should like it's crazy parties and politicians they promise this moon and the sun and all this jazz to people and then they come to power they do the opposite of what they promise to do they do the bidding of the lobbyists and the corporations and then they're not held accountable to me it just blows my mind if you did that in a contract in some kind of business decision oh i'm gonna do the roofing you know for all your house and you do the roofing for 10 percent of it take all the money and run how is that how is that legit it just crazy it blows me away for me there should be a high levels of uh devolution and regulation nobody should be unaccountable nobody should be out uh, absolute i agree i think personally those in power should be held more accountable the crimes that they commit that the general public gets punished for if they're in power and they commit the same crimes and they're they're held you know they're convicted of those crimes their punishment should be an order of magnitude more than the general public because they didn't take on that responsibility to be uh, in charge of everybody else it's, to me the whole concept is weird to me the whole concept is weird okay we're okay we're deviating from mathematics and getting into politics so how about we call it there we'll be back in about half an hour to do another live stream okay government in the west are deceptively weak at the moment small groups of unaccountable private individuals answerable to nobody have all the power uh, i think the governments in the west are extremely powerful i just think they're not held accountable uh, i think they have way too much power way too much power and i could give you examples example after example like it's crazy like e even my family has been influenced by it right uh, it's crazy it's crazy but we could talk about that another day thanks for uh, popping in race kill uh, have a good one you guys too you guys too and i'll be back in about half an hour if you want to come back and uh, participate in another math stream i'm off see ya ciao ciao um okay gang half an hour break stretch the legs do a little stretch come back with a little mathematics and open discussion again okay see you guys in a bit bye for now